Okay. So, um, let me start off by asking you a question. Um, remember back to Monday, Thursday, uh, and the new command which Jesus gave. Remember he said, I'm giving you a new commandment? What was that new commandment? Love one another. Yeah, it was love one another, and what was the second part of that? And love your neighbor as yourself. All right. And what's the next part? There's, a, but there's another part of that. As I loved you. Love one another as I, I loved, loved you. Loved you. Okay. Right? Sorry. Love one another as I have loved you. Not simply that we show love, uh, that's great, but he wants us to show love as he loved us. As he loved us, which is, which is sometimes, uh, that's a big tall order. And today we are going to talk a little bit about the letter which John wrote uh, to the early to early Christians, and talking about uh, the way uh, that that early church uh, saw a new life, and the way we're supposed to see a new life, because he 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 puts out a choice between living a life of life and living a life of death. And if you live a life of life, you are following his commandment, which is to love each other as I have loved you. Right? So, God, Jesus, when he, is, when he talks to the disciples, wants us to do more in our, in our love, love life for each other than simply say we love each other. He wants us to show action. He wants us to live it out. He wants us to put it in to practice. Right? He wants us to put, put love into action. Now, when uh, Jesus, or, or when John is, is talking, he says that uh, we, should love, oh, we should love one another, right? which, is, which is an important point. Uh, but we also, we have to do it the way Jesus loved us. And, and when we think about that, uh, he says that you, Jesus laid down his life for us. He was like the good shepherd. We heard in, in the Gospel of John that, uh, that Jesus is the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the flock. Right? We've all seen those pictures, haven't we, of Jesus carrying the sheep on his, uh, around, his, around his neck. We've heard the story about Jesus being the good shepherd who will go and find the one sheep which is lost and bring it back. We've heard about how Jesus was willing to, to put himself in the gate. I said, I am the gate. Uh, and he is protecting uh, um, the sheepfold from the wolves, right? And he talks about the others that kind of come and steal, kill, and destroy. The ones that want to come in and, and are false, false uh, prophets and the people that want to take you and lead you astray, and lead you down the path. We've heard all that about Jesus. We have this great picture about Jesus being the shepherd, and we are the sheep, and we are protected by God. Right? We all have that, that, that image sometimes somewhere in our, in, our, in our minds. John says that Jesus laid down his life for us, and you should be willing to do the same for others. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's something which makes you go, oh, really? Now, <clears throat> there are, uh, we can go to the extreme about giving your life for other people. But we can also go, uh, take a step, a few steps back. Because sometimes when people hear something very difficult, they say, well, I can never do that, right? All right, I can never do that. So I'm not even going to try, right? You know, uh, we'd like you to run, run the marathon. I couldn't run 26 miles. Well, could you run three? Yeah, but I'm not going to bother because I can't do the 26. Well, that's not, that's not the way to look at life. The way to look at it is that you do, you just don't wait off the whole, the whole marathon uh, because you can't go the whole distance, you know? <coughs> Maybe you eventually, if you work up to it, you can go the whole distance. Now, Jesus wants, uh, wants us to show the love which he showed to his disciples to one another. And that, uh, that means that, um, as, as John says, how can it be 
if you see people in need, when you have something, you don't help out. Okay? Now that could be the world's goods, like John says, the world's goods, but it can also be a whole bunch of other stuff where you are called to help other people. If Jesus laid down his life for us as the good shepherd, and we are supposed to lay down our lives for other people, what does that make us? Well, it makes us to be shepherds as well, right? We're not just, not just to be sheep, we're also called to be shepherds and watching out for other people. Remember what Jesus says to, to uh, Peter when he sees him after he returns? He says, uh, Peter, do you love me? And he says, you know I do, Lord. And Jesus says, feed my sheep. You take on the role which I had. You be the shepherd. You care for other people. You, it's your responsibility now. If you are going to obey my commandments, you will be living in the light, you'll, be, you'll feel that joy and all that wonderfulness, and my commandment is to love one another as I have loved you. To be able to lay down your life for someone else, to do for other people, to step out and start doing for other people. It is easy for us just to, to be like sheep and say, God, just take care of me, right? Just take care of me, God. Bah, I'm just a sheep, right? Okay? But that's not what he wants us to do. He wants us to be active shepherds. He wants us to be doing the things in the world which Jesus wants to have accomplished, which is showing love. When we talk about the good shepherd going off and finding that one sheep which is lost, he doesn't want you to sit at home and say, well, I hope Jesus finds him, that lost person. He wants you to do it. Right? He wants you to be active and take care of that. When you see someone who is, who is um, uh, hurting, you say, wow, maybe Jesus will lift them up. No, he wants you to lift them up and to help. And to, be, to be, be the shepherd for the sheep. The world is a hurting place. The world is a place with lots of lost sheep. And he calls each of us to help out and to do our part to protect the sheep which are so very lost sometimes. Think about the Lord is my shepherd. Right? We talk about the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want... He makes me lie down in good pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. Right? All those good things, which God does for us. And we pray to God, and we say, God, restore my soul. God, provide for me. Help me. You know? When I'm, when I'm hungry, feed me. Like, when I'm thirsty, give me something to drink. And God provides for us. Well, if we are the shepherd for other people, we are to be doing that for other people. When other people are down, when other people have to have their soul restored, when other people are hungry, when other people are thirsty, we are there to provide. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Are you going to be the one who helps out that person in need and prepares the table before them in the midst of problems. When that person is, is hurting and in trouble, are you going to be the one that steps in and helps out? Right? That's what God wants you to do. Now, <clears throat> we oftentimes, when we talk about helping other people, we say, oh yes, we, we do help people. We took up a collection and we sent some money, you know, to deepest, darkest, darkest Africa and help out some people there. Well, that's a good thing. It's good to help out people around the world. But interestingly, the, sto uh, the way that John tells us what to do, he talks about inter-family relations. He says it's like Cain and Abel, brothers, right? Brothers who, uh, one brother who was, was hateful of his other brother, one brother who who said, am I my brother's keeper? Do, what, should I care about my brother? Right? It's about family. Right? Over and over again, John says, my, 
my, my children. You know, take care of your brothers and sisters. It's a familial relationship. You don't have to go across the world on a mission trip to fulfill what Jesus wants you to do, right? You know, now sometimes it's nice to get away, okay? And sometimes you, you like we're sending kids to Delaware, and it, it, it's good for them to go into a different environment, and that's great. But we have to remember that it begins here. It begins in your family, right? To, to be the shepherd of your family, okay? Now that's not just you're saying, well, I am with my spouse. Well, that's good. And, and your kids, well, maybe. And your cousins, and your brothers and sisters, and your nieces and nephews and aunts and uncles or whatever they are, okay? You, you, the need to shepherd is not just inside your house. It reaches out to your whole family. And not just your family, but into your church and into your community, right? Those are the steps you need to take. You don't have to, you don't have to do the big thing first. Why don't you try something with your siblings, right? Right? I mean, do we all, is, it, is, is there anybody here who doesn't have a, somebody in your family who doesn't know Jesus? Right? Is there someone in your family? You know? Okay, now that'd be the direct, close relative. Maybe your family's a church-going family, but there's someone who's hurting. And even if they do know Jesus, are they hurting? Are they down on their luck? Right? My, uh, my father had two uncles in Rome. Two brothers. Uh, both had big farms. And one farm got anthrax. One didn't. Now, one had a big, huge, big, huge, great, great place, you know. And I remember I didn't know him, but I knew his wife. And he had a big, big, huge house, nice place. The other brother lived, it looked like something out of Appalachia. Okay, you know, it was, you know, you had sort of like, you know, curtains, you know, you know sheets across for, for walls and, and all that kind of stuff. Where's the charity between brothers, right? Right? You know, you see that that, that happens. So it's not just winning them for Christ. It's also helping out. It's uh, looking out for the, the needs of your family. Looking out for the needs in your church. Looking out for the needs in your community. <coughs> John says that if you are faithful and follow his commandments and are doing what God wants you to do, you will, you will get whatever God asks for you. Right? He'll do whatever you ask because you're asking to be helping, to be doing, to be sharing. And you're doing God's will. And when you do that, you become unstoppable. Right? So, do you want to keep being just sheep? You know? Or do you want to step up, be a shepherd, and live the life which God called you to do, helping others? Sometimes we, we, we feel like we need all the help. But you know what? When you're helping others, sometimes the help you need, you sort of forget about that. Right? You sort of forget about that. I was down at the Presbyterian Home this week, volunteer breakfast they have. There's some people that, that have been volunteering at that home for 25 years. People who come in there, their, their parents were in the home, their parents passed away, they're still volunteering because they get so much out of doing for others and caring for other people. Right? When you do that, you're going to feel all sorts of love. You're going to feel joy and and wonderfulness and you're going to feel pumped up